I don't use the C word. I've been in this field since the beginning, so I don't use the C word. People can describe it the way they want to, um, but uh, that, that's not something I would use, although obviously the, the improvement is striking. Uh, well, they should know that um, uh, in, in many of the patients, there's a very significant improvement in ejection fraction, which is something they look directly at. In fact, some of the patients had improvements as high as 24 points over a baseline of about 30. So they reach the normal range of people age matched that don't have heart disease. That, that's how good it can be. Um, likewise, we saw um, statistically significant improvements in relaxation and filling of the heart. Um, and that's very striking because there's not another medicine I know of that, that has shown that. And the outcome of all that, which is really important, is we saw a tremendous decrease in episodes of hospitalization in these patients for congestive heart failure. In fact, compared to the placebo patients, we saw a 67% decrease in episodes of hospitalization. This is what the healthcare system is focused on because obviously this is terrible for patients to be hospitalized for heart failure, but also costs a lot of money. And along with that, as you might expect, we saw a, a very striking decrease in mortality from congestive heart failure. In fact, in the 42 patients that are in this first study that were treated with the gene therapy, none of them died within a year of congestive heart failure, none of them. No, this is not a drug, it's a biologic. So you don't have drug-drug interactions, you don't have missed doses, only it gets dosed once. It is just like an angiography. So uh, for those folks that might not know exactly what an angiography is, it's an outpatient procedure in which a cardiologist uh, puts a catheter, a tube, threads it up from the leg up into the coronary arteries of the heart and then they, they literally screw on a syringe, there's no needles, uh, with a die and, you know, push the plunger down, the die goes in. It's exactly the same with our gene therapy. It's delivered exactly the same way into each of the coronary arteries, and, and this can be done in a relatively short period of time, an outpatient procedure, patient goes home. Um, with the gene therapy, it looks like it, it requires about 10 to 14 days to get full effect, which is very, very rapid. And, and it's, uh, it, it appears to be a, a single dose therapy. So you don't have to redose it. Generally, uh, cardiologists, interventional cardiologists, would administer this kind of thing. But it is done routinely, as you probably know. Angiography is the gold standard for diagnosing coronary artery disease. So it's done in every hospital, you know, pretty much in the civilized world on a regular basis every day. So th this is not, doesn't take advanced skill beyond that to administer the product. Well, the cold virus is a vector, right? It's not, it's not a treatment per se. It has the gene inside, okay? But uh, the cold virus that we use, which has been used in about a quarter of all clinical gene therapy studies uh, so far in history, so you're talking about thousands of studies have been done with this, very, very safe. Um, that virus is um, obviously purified and it's uh, uh, suspended in solution and so um, when that is injected into the coronary arteries, um, there's the first capillary bed um, that the virus sees actually um, uh, is lined with receptors that are specific for a human adenovirus. And we didn't know this when we started but we learned it. As a result of that, the viral particles simply attach nearly immediately to these receptors and are actively taken up across the cells and infect the cardiac myocytes, the, the, mu the muscle cells, um, in extraordinary high yield gene transfer. This sets us apart from just about every gene therapy company that's ever existed because normally gene therapy has low, what we would call low yield gene transfer. One to three percent of the cells along a needle track would take up a virus, this kind of a virus, if it were needle injected. But when you infuse it in the coronary arteries, you get about 40% of the cells that take this up. Now, once they take it up, it's permanent, and there's no diminution of effect for one simple reason. Cardiac myocytes are 
terminally differentiated, meaning they don't divide. And so once they've taken up the gene, that's it. And so our study, which lasted for a year in these patients, showed these kinds of effects I've talked to you about. And the patients then were followed for an additional two-year follow-up period. So we will have three years worth of data on these patients in the not too distant future.